What's really interesting about liver cancer, I think, versus other malignancies we treat is that it's really two diseases. It's chronic liver disease, as you've heard, and then it's a cancer anatomical problem. And given that it is associated with underlying liver disease, given that the only way to cure the disease is really with a surgical approach, either transplant or resection, I think a lot of, a lot of opinion is that patients are best managed at a multidisciplinary center. Dr. Marshall, can you comment on that, what the multidisciplinary program looks at in an academic center, and does that exist outside of academia? Sure. Well, this is uh, something that's very easy to overlook for many physicians, but it's important to know that uh, patients who are treated in multidisciplinary approaches often have better outcomes with increased survivals. Uh, they're often offered more therapies than those patients treated without a multidisciplinary setting. Uh, so ideally, the uh, multidisciplinary setting includes all physicians who will take care of the patient and supporting personnel. Um, we can uh, keep, uh, we can involve medical oncologists, surgical oncologists, or hepatobiliary surgeons. We need hepatologists involved in this care. Um, primary care physicians are crucial uh, in managing other issues that come up with these patients, as well as interventional radiologists, and don't forget the diagnostic radiologists who can often help uh, make these diagnoses and point out other things uh, about these tumors that may make them higher risk, such as portal vein invasion, uh, extra hepatic disease and things like that. So, you know, in an academic center that might be easy, but in the community, how, how should doctors try to interact? Well, what we see uh, in the United States, community physicians often don't have the support uh, that these larger academic centers have. Um, and so, referral pathways are very important in these instances. And with a lot of other diseases, communication is crucial in these settings. Um, a pathway to refer patients to a larger center in which the referring physician can pass along information or receive information. They may still act as that patient's primary care physician and need to stay in the loop uh, with what's going on with these patients is very important. Yeah, I think those are good points. I mean, ultimately, uh, given that any one physician in the United States or even globally might not see a lot of liver cancer if you're an oncologist or GI doctor, uh, and, and referring often to a larger center where they have access to people who only concentrate on this disease is probably, probably best for patients if it can, can happen. Absolutely. Yeah, we spent a lot of time about screening for liver cancer uh, to find nodules early. And I think often uh, clinicians think a nodule, I need a biopsy. Do we always need to do a biopsy to make the diagnosis of liver cancer? Well, we've seen a large shift in this. Uh, previously, uh, before the advent of the LIRAD system, the liver imaging reporting uh, data system, uh, interventional radiologists were performing a lot of biopsies to make these diagnoses. Um, and the fact of the matter is, now we are able to make a diagnosis of HCC based on cross-sectional imaging. Patients will go from a screening study, which is usually an ultrasound with or without an AFP, to a contrast-enhanced study, whether it's a CAT scan, a triple-phase liver CT, or a dynamic MRI. Um, and contrast-enhanced ultrasound is also useful in that area. Um, what we do uh, when we do these types of imaging is we really look at the blood flow in the liver. And so we inject some contrast into a, a vein, and we watch it over time as it flows through the liver to identify a hypervascular tumor um, and see something uh, within the liver that's perfused differently than normal liver parenchyma. So based on some characteristics of these uh, tumors, we can identify definitively that a patient has HCC. Um, there are other categories in which we think a patient is at very high risk for HCC based on some tumor uh, characteristics, but it's not definitively diagnostic. Uh, in that situation, yes, we do pursue biopsy in some instances, um, but the, risk, the role of biopsy has really uh, decreased lately. So liver cancer... Let me clarify a bit, uh, just the, because the criteria that are diagnostic in the LIRATS are exactly the same criteria that were developed by the ASLD criteria and the ESL criteria. And then, okay, all right, four, five, okay. Then you have two and three. The fact that you have low probability does not mean that it is not relevant for the individual. So it's not going to the casino. So if you have, let's say, a LIRATS 2 and you have a 10% probability, you will never tell a, a patient, oh, don't worry, you have a low likelihood to have cancer, just right. the, the one in 10. He will say, I'm sorry, right. one in 10. Biopsy. <laughs> so the certification according of risk is good for betting money, but not for taking decisions. And I think that this is something that has to be clarified, because otherwise we will see patients that could have been diagnosed early of liver cancer, 
that they will be delayed until getting into four or five category of the LIRADs, and this will be a disservice. I agree with you, and these are the subtleties that come up uh, that are often best treated in multidisciplinary yeah. settings. Patients that may need to continue in screening or who are considered very high risk who should undergo additional surveillance versus biopsy. Um, and so these patients don't fit classification systems, and they need that individual care. Yeah, of course. I, I, I think Dr. Bruges' point is well taken. If you have a LIRADS2 lesion, it doesn't mean you go away and you're never seen again. You need to stay in the system and continue imaging. So this is why it's characteristic, but it's, un, it's not undetermined. And if this is the case, the only way to go is to take a biopsy, if you want to treat. If you do not want to do treatments, then you can do whatever you want. So liver cancer, as we've heard, is a disease that in the correct setting, chronic liver disease, a hypervascular tumor, we can say with confidence is, is liver cancer without a biopsy. A lot of cancer medicine is moving towards biopsy-driven, biology-driven diagnoses and treatment. By not doing biopsies, have we somewhat shot ourselves in the foot? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question. I mean, so, you know, the goal of where we want to take medicine is really precision medicine. So really tailoring therapies to individual patients. And most HCC trials to date have been all comers. Um, and it hasn't really been biology driven. We just had our first HCC trial that was really biomarker driven. So the Tavantinib study that was for CMET positive patients, um, unfortunately negative, but, um, but at least it was a study that went that direction. Um, at least in my opinion, I think that, you know, I think this is really where we should aim to go. Um, in terms of the role of, of biopsy to do this, I think that first, if you don't have a trial that actually is biomarker driven, I don't think we should be doing routine biopsies on patients. Um, and then in terms of your question of have we shot ourselves in the foot, I think you're probably right, that we have less of an understanding than we probably should. That being said, I don't think that biopsy should be routinely done in all centers. I think it either needs to be done on a research protocol or as part of clinical trials. And with more and more clinical trials now mandating a biopsy, I think we are going to learn more about this over time. I agree with Dr. Singal. I think we need to do, use biopsy when it's going to affect therapies. Um, and as of right now, we're starting to see, as you mentioned, an expansion of our therapies. And so hopefully we'll see an increasing role in biopsy for that in the future.